What's up you guys? Welcome back to the Average Joe on Money Financial Channel. My name is Joe and welcome to this video. We are talking about Vanguard Index Funds, which is a topic I love to talk about because I love Vanguard Index Funds. Woo and today we're talking about two of the best. Specifically, we're talking about Vanguard's S&P 500 Index Fund and Vanguard's Total Market Index Fund. It's been almost a year since I've last talked about Vanguard Index Funds and a lot has happened between then and now, especially with COVID-19 and the stock market crisis that, we, that occurred back in March of 2020. So in this video, we're gonna break down the differences between Vanguard's exchange traded fund version of the S&P 500 and the total market. So that is VOO for the S&P 500 and VTI for the total stock market index. We're gonna take a look at the differences between the two, see how they've performed over the past year as well as long term because we definitely want to look more than just year to date or one year or three years we're concerned with as much history as we can garner you guys know how much i hate long and drawn out bs videos that waste people's time that's what i hate so let's go ahead and without further delay jump right into the content here let's talk about the differences between vanguard's vti and voo just a quick brief introduction to the idea of what an exchange traded fund is vanguard has both exchange traded funds and they have indexed mutual funds. Now, ultimately the underlying assets are the exact same, but the investment product is a little bit different. Exchange traded funds are traded just like a stock. They have a ticker symbol, they trade throughout the day. Um, and when you buy an exchange traded fund throughout the day, whatever price it's trading for at that moment is the price you get it for. That is different than an indexed mutual fund, which is an example of a, an open-ended mutual fund, meaning that the number of shares outstanding for that mutual fund change based on the number of investors. And an indexed mutual fund, you cannot buy it throughout the day. It has its own ticker symbol, but you can only buy it at the end of the trading day once the investment company, that mutual fund, has had an opportunity to reconcile all of the sales and purchases of the underlying investments and all of the investors that currently own the index mutual fund. And then at that point, once they have the net asset value or NAV for all of the assets in the fund, that's when they can offer it for a specific price. And you have to buy shares of the index fund directly from that company. You can't buy them from anywhere. Whereas with an exchange sort of fund, you can buy, you can have your brokerage account with anybody or your retirement account with any different company and you should have access for free to purchase exchange trade of funds from any different company. So let's understand what these two different exchange trade of funds are. So first off, we have the Vanguard S&P 500 index fund and the ticker symbol here is VOO. And this is an exchange trade of fund that tracks the S&P 500 index, which is the 500 largest companies in the United States based on their market capitalization and also as long as they meet their minimum eligibility criteria, including specifically being profitable for a certain number of quarters in a row, having a certain level of market capitalization, amongst other things. The top 500 companies here based on market capitalization. So when you think of the top companies in this whole in this index, you're thinking of companies like Apple and Microsoft and Google and most recently Tesla and Visa and MasterCard and all these different companies. Top 500 companies, that's the S&P 500 and that's what VOO tracks. It's a passive investment. So there's no active investment manager making buy and sell decisions. This is a passive fund that is simply tracking the underlying index. You can also see that the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF has an expense ratio, meaning there is a cost for Vanguard to run this investment on your behalf. And it's much lower than you would have with most other index funds or even indexed mutual funds or mutual funds out there. Um, but it does cost some money. You can see it right here on the screen, 0.03% of the assets. In contrast, let's talk a little bit about the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF. Ticker symbol here is VTI, as you can see here on the screen. And the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF is seeks to track the performance of the CRSP, US Total Market market index, which is essentially, it's trying to track the in the entire stock market, the large companies, the middle-sized companies, and the small companies. You can also see here that with the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF has the exact same expense ratio as the S&P 500 ETF at 0.03%, which is so small. You can see here that for the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, we've got a market price as of end of trading 12.23 of 2020 for $337.74. 
And then for Vanguard VTI, we've got $193.20. You shouldn't worry about the difference in the prices here. You're still gonna be getting your money's worth with whichever ETF you invest in. Don't worry about these stock prices. You can actually purchase, in many instances, you can purchase fractional shares. You don't have to have a whole share of any individual ETF, depending on your brokerage, of course. So let's talk a little bit about the performance of these two ETFs. Because you know when most people think of the of VTI versus VOO, they think that, well, they're very similar in their performance over their history, the one, three, the five, and the 10-year history, and over the life of the exchange traded fund. Um, but we have seen a little a bit of, of difference here just in the most recent quarter or half a year of data. So if we look here first at the S&P 500 ETF, we can see that year to date through December 23rd of 2020, the return is 16.22%. And if you look back historically here, we go up here to average annual returns updated monthly, we've got the one year return at 17.41, three year at 13.15%, five year at 13.96%, the 10 year return at 14.16%. And then since inception in September of 2010, the, this specific ETF has returned 14.75%, which is epic. It's really a great return from your investment. So then the question is, how does that compare to the Vanguard total stock market ETF, VTI? Let's take a look here. Year to date, December 23rd at 19.59%. So it's almost three full percentage points greater than the S&P 500. Let's see how that has re return has changed over time. One year return, 19.12. Three year return, 13.23%. Five year return, 13.96%. And then the 10 year return, 14.04. And then since inception, and you'll notice here it's got a longer time frame. So you can see here with VTI, it's been going since 2001, which means it's got two crises under its belt. It's got from, it's got the, um, just right out of the dot com bubble, it's got the 2008 housing crisis, and it's got COVID, amongst other small dips along the way. So since inception, you can't really compare these since it's such a wide difference 2010 versus 2001 but since inception of May 2001 8.05% so what's interesting here is that if you look back historically these two ETFs are almost identical in their returns even though they're fundamentally different types of ETFs you've got just 500 companies versus the total stock market many more holdings and you saw on the three the five and the ten year returns that they were very similar in nature but Year to date, over the one year return, year to date specifically, we've got a difference of almost 3%. So my question to you is how does that happen? How do we have such a fundamental difference year to date between two indexes that are very similar in historical returns? To answer that question, we need to dive underneath the hood and look at the underlying investments in each of these ETFs. As you can see here, the S&P 500 has 509 holdings. Uh, and then if you compare that over to VTI, we have 3,586 different holdings. So a very huge difference here in the number of holdings in each of these index funds. Let's take a look here at the equity sector diversification. So we're looking at the total stock market. We can see the largest holding is in technology at 26. Then we've got 13 industrials, 13 healthcare, 10% in financials, and 16% in consumer discretionary. If we pop over here to VOO, we can see how that compares. We've got 27.6% here in um, information technology, 13% in healthcare, 10% uh, in financials, 11% consumer discretionary, industrials are here only 8.8%. And one of the big differences here you're gonna find between these two ETFs is a big fundamental difference in the industrials holding. 8.8% for the S&P 500, total market's at 13.8%. I wonder what's causing that difference here. If you know, if you know what's causing this difference, you wanna drop that in the chat below in the comments, you let me know with your two cents. Let me know why you feel, based on the industrial section, why VTI is outperforming VOO. I'm curious to see what you guys say. You can see here for VOO, the top 10 holdings, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Facebook, Berkshire Hathaway, Johnson & Johnson, JP Morgan, Visa, and Procter & Gamble. And those top 10 holdings make up 28.2% of the overall index from a value perspective. How does that compare to VTI? Well, with VTI, we've got Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, or Google, Facebook, Berkshire, Tesla, Tesla. Johnson & Johnson, JP Morgan, Visa, the 10 largest holdings make up 23.1% for the total stock market versus 28% with the S&P 500 ETF. Tesla is in the industrial sector of the economy. It's due to Tesla, 
that the total stock market has been outperforming VOO most recently because as they've gained in, in uh, popularity and gained in market share as well as just market capitalization, they've taken on a larger and larger weighting in the total stock market. And, and technically, Tesla's not even actually in the S&P 500 yet. Well, actually, they just joined just a few days ago. And, pro and based on these holdings, it doesn't look like they've been incorporated into them yet at a sizable level. So the big difference here is that Tesla's had a massive run up this year and throughout the year as they go farther and farther they've had a larger weighting in the total stock market as they've gained value and as a result since the S&P 500 hasn't included Tesla yet that's why you're seeing such a big divergence in the uh, year to date pricing for both of these ETFs. I expect that that difference is going to come back together again as Tesla is being added to the S&P 500 and I imagine that come December 31st or a short time before or after that we will see a much closer uh, performance between these two ETFs. Well, you should definitely not own both of them because they're, they're almost the exact same thing. If you look at the underlying holdings, they're almost exactly the same. So you can say that the S&P 500 ETF has a larger concentration in the top 10 holdings. The truth of the matter though is even though they are wholly separate types of indexes in that one of them has got 509 holdings, the other has th over 3,500, they're both cap weighted indexes, meaning that the weighting in the index is based on their market capitalization, not based on some sort of equal weighting amongst all the companies. So you can expect with the S&P 500 and the total market, the largest companies in each index are taking the significant portion of the top weighting for both of the ETFs. So at the end of the day, um, and especially as we move forward and we see that Tesla is in both of these indexes, I imagine that the, the, the market returns are going to be very similar. You can buy both of these ETFs with any brokerage. Ultimately, at the end of the day, you can choose whichever one you want to. They're going to perform very similarly. They're going to have the very similar holdings. Their dividend payments are going to be very similar to each other. Um, we're not going to see much of a difference here, though we do see it right now, year to date, 2020. So if you like the idea of owning 3,500 different companies, owning the total market, then buy VTI. Um, but if you prefer to own just the top 500 holdings, you don't want that much diversification, 3,500 companies, then buy VOO. They're both going to get very similar returns, though. Hopefully, you found some value out of this video. Make sure to leave your two sense in the comments below. Do you own VTI or VOO in your portfolio? And um, which way are you leaning if you don't own it yet? Which one are you looking to buy based on what we talked about? Have a great rest of your day, guys, and please continue to stay healthy both physically and financially. Have a good one.